Hi students, welcome to lesson number 16, Sampling, Meaning and Characteristics. Introduction. The main aim of sociologist is to study the social phenomena in complete detail in order to make generalizations and formulate theories. In order to make a complete detailed study of the social phenomena which involve a mass of data, analysis would be slow and tedious. Moreover, collection of data and analysis of a larger data or material is wasteful when a smaller amount of data is sufficient. For example, the researcher would like to study the voting behavior of the students admitted in Usmania University. It would be nearly impossible or difficult to gather or collect the primary data from every single student across the university. If the data has to be gathered from the entire student community, it would be extremely time consuming and a costly affair. As a result, researcher uses samples as a way to gather primary data. On the basis of sample study, prediction and generalization of the behavior of mass phenomena can be made. Sampling must be done whenever and wherever the researcher would like to gather the information from only a fraction of population of a group or a phenomena which we intend to study. Now let us study about the objectives of this lesson. After reading this lesson, you will be able to define sample, explain the characteristics of sample, explain the terminology used in sampling. Meaning, in social science research, collection of first hand information or data, which we call it as primary data, pertaining to units of study from the field is required for empirical studies. The units of study may either be a single member or a collection of members or households or institutions or geographical areas from whom the information is required. A member of the population is called as a unit. It is the subject on which measurement is taken. A part of the population is known as a sample and the process of drawing a sample from a larger population is called sampling. The list of sampling units from a sample is drawn is called the sampling frame. For example, voter list, a map, telephone directory and so on. The sampling frame is not a sample, rather it is the operational definition of the population which provides the basis for sampling. For example, a researcher decides to study the attitude of sociology students enrolled in Usmania University on introducing semester system. A student of that course is a unit. The total of all the sociology students enrolled in sociology course is the population. The list of sociology students from which the sample will be drawn is the sample frame. Aims or purpose of sampling. Now let us discuss the aims. A large population cannot be studied in its entirety for a reason of size, time, cost or inaccessibility. Limited time, lack of funds and population scattered in a very wide geographical area often makes sampling necessary. Well selected sampling may reflect accurately the characteristics of the population. The main purpose of sampling is to make an inference about unknown parameters from a measurable sample statistic. Further, sampling method is used to test a statistical hypothesis relating to population. A sample is drawn and the primary data is gathered from the respondents and analyzed and on the basis of the results, the hypothesis may be accepted or rejected. Sample. A sample is a subset of the population being studied. It represents the larger population and is used to draw the inferences about that specific population. 
Sample is a tool which helps to know the characteristics of universe or population by examining only a small part of it. A sample should exhibit the same basic features or characteristics of the population from which it is drawn. According to Good and Hart, sample is so essential a part of research procedure that every sociologist though not required to be a sampling expert, at least be thorough with its logic and basic techniques. According to Manham, a sample is a part of the population which is studied in order to make inferences about the whole population. According to Yang, he defines a sample as a miniature picture of the entire population from which a sample is taken. According to Webster, a sample is a finite part of a statistical population whose properties are studied to gain information about the whole population. It is a research technique widely used in the social sciences as a way to gather information about the population without having to measure the entire population. Census method and sampling method. In social science research, the primary data from the respondents can be gathered using either of the two methods. They are census method and sampling method. First one is census method. When the desired study requires contacting all the population or the whole area for data collection, the method is known as census method. It refers to the collection of data from all the elements constituting the universe. Second one, sampling method. When a small group is selected as representation of the whole population, then the method is known as sampling method. In this method, a small group of individuals are selected from whom the data or information is gathered and the results are generalized to the entire population. study of and the arriving at the solution of the whole universe of a social problem is very difficult. It is complex in terms of time consuming and costly. Hence it would be better to pick up a sample which represent the whole universe. Thus the study of a unit representing the universe is a sample method study. Thus sampling techniques are adopted wherein only a selected number of units are observed and conclusions are drawn about the universe from the study. The use of sampling technique in social science research has mushroomed greatly in the recent years because of technological developments such as computerization and statistical package in social science research. Assumptions the basic assumptions in sampling techniques are there exists an underlying unit in the diverse universe from which the unit of study is picked up. Second one, it is possible to have a sample that represents the universe as whole. The third one, the study may not be absolutely accurate but accurate to the possible extent. The fourth one is the size, reliability, the representative nature and items of study are to be taken into account in the study. The fifth assumption is selecting of sample is to be unbiased and based on objectivity. The sixth one is proper training in the work and use of various tools and techniques to the researcher is necessary. Now let us discuss the characteristics of a good sample. According to Kutari, let us discuss the characteristics of a good sample design. The first one, sample design must result in a truly representative sample. The second one, sample design must be such which results in a small sampling error. Third one, sample design must be viable in the context of funds available for the research study. And the fourth one, sample design 
must be such so that the systematic bias can be controlled in a better way. Fifth one, sample should be in such a way that the results of the sample study can be applied in general for the universe with a reasonable level of confidence. Sample size and selection. The sample size is essential in conducting the research and most researchers find it difficult to determine the size of the sample. It is observed that larger the sample size, the better outcome can be evaluated at the end of the research. The sample size depends on the statistical outcome needed for the findings. Let us discuss the points which we need to keep in mind while deciding on how large a sample should be. The first one, when the selected sample needs to be segregated into small clusters involving comparison of clusters, a large sample would be appropriate. Second one, in the longitudinal studies or studies which take longer period should have a minimum sample which allows the researcher to have frequent contact with subject to maintain the interest. The third one, a larger heterogeneous group has to be studied, then large sample is required. For small homogeneous group, a small sample size is required. According to Kreis and Morgan, they have given a table in which no calculations are needed to determine the size of the sample. Now let us see the table given by Kreis and Morgan. In the table, we have capital N, which represents total population and S, which represents the size of the sample. For example, there are 10 people in the universe. Then the sample size for our study will be 10. If you are going to have the total population of 220, then we are going to select 140 people from 220 for the study. If you are going to have 1200 total population, then we are going to have a sample size of 291. For example, if you are going to have 10,000 total population, then we are going to select 370 people for our study. If you are going to have uh, nearly 40,000 population, then the sample size will be 380. If the total population is 50,000, 381 will be selected for the study and more than 1 lakh, it will be 384. So, according to Kreis and Morgan, they have given the table by which we can select the sample size for our study without making any calculations. For example, the researcher would like to know the opinion of 30,000 beneficiaries of a particular scheme being implemented by the state government. Refer table where the sample size is 30,000 or the total population size is 30,000. The sample size representative of the beneficiaries in this case will be 379. The table given above is applicable to the defined population. Now let us discuss about the advantages of sampling method. It saves time, money and energy. There is a scope for attention and interest in the study. It covers wide area in a short time. Thorough study is possible. No need of trained researchers. Now let us discuss the disadvantages of sampling techniques. First one, sampling has in actual practice of biases and prejudice. Sample may not represent the whole universe because of its complexity. And due to lack of specialized knowledge in the study, there is a scope for mistakes and errors. And drawing conclusions and applications is also a problem. Now let us study the terminology used in sampling. The first one is universe or population. The population or universe represent the entire group of units which is the focus of the research study. 
the universe of a particular study is set by the research question which specifies who or what is to be included in the research. Universe may be individuals, group of people, organizations or even objects. For example, the researcher wants to know the perception of students studying sociology at Usmania University or national education policy. The universe comprises of all the students enrolled in sociology at Usmania University. The specific nature of the population depends upon the purpose of investigation. For example, if the researcher wishes to study the voting behavior of people in Hujrabad by elections, all the people who are eligible to cast their vote will be included in the universe. Sample It is a portion of total population. It is nothing but the number of sample units to be included in the sample. We can calculate the sample using the mathematical formula capital N is equal to small n divided by 1 plus small n into e square where small n represents the total population to be studied with the specific features where e is equal to 0 0.05 we are going to see the confidence level at 0 0.05 where capital N is equal to sample size. For example, the researcher wants to study the perception of students studying sociology at Usmania University or national education policy. For example, say the number of students enrolled in sociology program is 1000. By applying the total population in the formula, n by 1 plus n into e square, the sample size comes to 285. Rounding of this figure, we can decide to gather the information from 300 strengths. We can stratify the strengths into two groups uh, such as male strengths and female strengths and gather the responses from 150 male strengths and 150 female strengths. Sampling element. Each unit, for example, individuals, family, group, and organization, and so on, from the population about which the information is collected is called a sampling element. For example, the researcher wishes to gather the perception of sociology students of Usmania University on NEP, National Education Policy. The total number of sociology students will be the sampling elements. Sampling unit. Sampling unit is often used as sample unit. The term sampling unit refers to a singular value or individual person taken from an entire population or universe for the research purpose. For example, the researcher wants to gather information or data from the households. Based on the purpose of the study or research questions, the child or the individuals in the family can be a sampling unit. A sampling unit might not be necessarily an individual. It may be an event, a city, a village or even a nation. Sampling frame. It is a list of all the items or people within the universe or population from which the sample can be drawn. A good sampling frame would have the following qualities. First one, include all the individuals or units in the target population logically. Second one, it excludes all the individuals or units not in the target population. Third one, it include accurate information about the individuals or units in the population. Sampling trait. It is the element on the basis of which we select the sample from the total universe. The element can be qualitative or quantitative. Sampling fraction. It is the proportion of the total population to be included in the sample. The formula to calculate the sampling fraction is small n divided by capital N, where small n represents the sample size and capital N represents the total population with the specific features to be studied. 
biased sample. If the researcher selects a sample where some elements are more likely to be represented than other elements, it is called as biased sample. For example, the researcher wishes to study the problems of people residing in the slum areas in Hyderabad. There are many slums in Hyderabad. The researcher may select the people residing in slum areas nearby the industries, ignoring the people residing in slum areas in rich localities, which may lead to bias. Parameters The characteristics of a population are called as parameters. The parameters represent the summary description of the population. For example, the average age of the respondents, average income of the respondents and so on. Sampling error. The errors which arise due to the use of sampling surveys are known as sampling error. The researcher has collected the required information without any mistakes for the study from the selected samples. However, the samples differ to some extent due to various factors. All the samples may not be alike in spite of being selected from the same population which leads to sampling error. There are two types of sampling errors. The first one is biased error. This biased error arises as a result of any bias or prejudice of the person in selecting a particular sampling method. The second one is unbiased error. It may be either accidentally or arise in the natural course of events and are without any bias or prejudice. Methods of sampling Different types of sampling methods are used for drawing a sample plan. Sampling methods can be broadly classified into two categories probability sampling and non-probability sampling. First one is probability sampling. This sampling method is employed when the researcher has complete information about the people with the specific features or characteristics to be studied. The second one is non-probability sampling. The researcher will use this non-probability sampling when sufficient information or no information is available about the people with specific characteristics to be studied. We will study about the types of sampling in detail in the next two lessons. Let us sum up. While selecting any sampling technique, the researcher should take into account the purpose, reliability, accuracy, time and cost of the research. After a quick overview of the sampling techniques, one can say that normally a researcher should take simple random sampling because under it bias is eliminated and sampling error can be estimated. But in case of small universe and intensive study, purposive sampling is considered more appropriate.